In this presentation, we're going to enter the data from the payroll register for the last month of operations of December for the year and enter that information into the general journal to the general ledger and create the trial balance from it. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. So there's gonna be a bit of a twist on this last one. It's gonna be much the same, however, a little bit different. We're gonna to try to put this in a little bit faster, focus a little bit more on uh, Excel as we format this last one. We're going to start here on the register and note we're going to be on the data in for November. We've got the frozen panes and we've made it green here so that we don't mistake where we're at. In order to freeze the panes, if your pane's not frozen yet, we're going to go up top to cell uh, all the way up to uh, A4. A4, then you're going to go to the view tab. You're going to go to the windows group. We're going to go to the freeze panes. We're going to go to freeze. It'll say freeze panes if your panes aren't yet frozen whereas mine says unfreeze because my panes are already frozen, so I'm not going to click it. Once it's frozen, however, we should be able to see these top bar will remain. As we scroll down to the current pay period, we are working on that of the final month, December. Okay, so once we're there, I'm going to make this green. You can highlight the, all your numbers there and right click and make them green if you choose to do so. It probably doesn't matter because we're not going to move around too much once we're here. Then we're going to go to the general ledger and see if we can get our data situated there so that we can put this last uh, few journal entries in and be good with the year. It's a busy time here, year in for us as we enter this last payroll period in December. So we're going to select all the cells. I'm going to unhide everything first and then uh, see if we can situate things and then we'll hide everything once again when we're ready. So we're going to put our cursor on the cell, uh, the drop down like this, left click and highlight all the way to the left and then uh, select the selected or right click on the selected area and then unhide that selected area. Then we're, we're going to see all of our data here. Now we're going to go to, of course, uh, our note, I'm having problems here because there's also frozen panes here. So uh, the frozen panes can cause pain when you don't know they're frozen. So you want to unfreeze the panes and then we'll freeze them again uh, to, to help us. So we're going to go to the home to the view tab up top we're going to go to the windows group we're going to go to the freeze panes and go to unfreeze the pane and then we can move and then we'll freeze the panes once we no longer need as much movement so we want to put our information into this last data cell of course our journal entry is going to be much the same so as we did last time we're going to copy not the numbers but the format of the cells so we're going to say, you know, we're going to need this, we're going to need this. I'm not going to copy the last one. Eh, let's copy the last one. We'll copy the last one too. So we're going to copy all that. We're going to right click and copy. And then we're going to put our cursor over here and right click and paste. One, two, three. One, two, three helps this time. The formulas only, that means, because we changed the, the format type down here a bit. And that's because there's going to be a slight difference in this final uh, pay period, meaning we've been running payrolls for the month and then paying the payroll the first day of the following month. That's when we actually wrote the check. That's when we're making the payroll. Um, if, if that's our system, if that's the payroll system we're doing, which means we're kind of more on a cash basis, which is typical for payroll. Payroll will not line up specifically to our pay periods when we make financial statements. Uh, it may not work exactly this way, but we'll have some... You know, it depends on what system we're in. But in, in any case, we want to set up the payroll system to work as easily as possible for the payroll system, not so that it works as easily as possible for an accrual accounting system. Uh, and in our case, that meant that we wrote the checks on uh, the first day of the following pay period, and we just did one journal entry at that point of time in order to process payroll. Now, we're going to have basically an adjusting entry at the end of the year 
because we need to have all the payroll in there as of 1231 and we're not going to pay it until January of the next uh, year. So what we're going to do is, is we're not actually going to pay cash. So the, the journal entry will be all the same except for this account. We're not going to pay it yet because we typically don't pay it until the, the first day of the next year and we're going to keep with that practice. And note that we don't want to mess up the payroll. The payroll kind of usually is like its own function. So we don't want to, you know, tweak the payroll process and make it more complicated in order to align with the end of the year. What we're going to do is make an adjusting entry and then allow payroll to do what payroll does. So to do that, we're, we're going to, instead of uh, just paying the cash out here, we're going to put it into a payroll liability account. So that's going to be our twist right there. That's, that's the twist that we were looking forward to seeing. So the liability is going to be the thing that increases and not the cash account. I'm going to right click and paste that there. Everything else will be the same uh, and this will increase. Now note, if you're looking at payroll problems in a book, then oftentimes they like to use uh, the payroll payable account because it kind of tells you exactly you know, what we're doing, that this is a payroll journal entry. So um, you'll, you might see that on all, all the journal entries. Um, and it just, again, it depends kind of how we're setting up the payroll process. Then, and then we've got the uh, payroll tax liability. This one will be uh, the same. And note that the payment that we make, when we actually make the payment then, it's gonna happen in January uh, of the next year, right? This, the, the actual payment happened on January 15th, even though the payment was for payroll period ended in the prior year for December. And that's typically the case. So when we do the payroll taxes, and try to tie everything out, we have to uh, deal with that. The fact that the payments are not gonna be in the same time period typically as the payroll period for which they're being paid. And that'll happen at the cutoffs. That'll happen in December and, and, and possibly in the first in January if we were doing a full payroll period, we'd have to watch out for that kind of issue. So we'll, we'll look at that when we, do the, um, when we do the summary documents. So now I'm gonna hide, which will be the 941s and the 940, for the end of the year. So let's hide everything to the left now. I'm gonna put my cursor on uh, this X here, and then we're gonna select the data all the way to the left, let go, and then right click on that data and hide that data. We don't need to see that data. It's too much data to be looking at it at the same time. So now we're just gonna pick up our information here from the payroll register. So we've got our, uh, our journal entry, we're gonna go back to the payroll register. What we want to pick up, uh, well, let's go, let's look at it. Let's take a look at it. We're gonna go down to our last month here and we're gonna start with total earnings. We're gonna pick up just, just the same thing here. We got total earnings minus all these deductions gives us the net pay. So we'll start with total earnings. Let's go back to our journal entry. That'll be an expense, it'll be a debit. We're in AB5, we're gonna put equals there and then select, go back to our register and say we want this dark blue number, the 487750 for total earnings. Then all of these are gonna be credits because they're liabilities. This is what we're gonna be removing from the paycheck for the benefit of the employee and paying it to the government. So in AC60, we're gonna say negative instead of equals. Go back to the register and we're looking for that OASDI, which is right here in N37 and enter. We'll do the same for HI. We're gonna say instead of equals, negative. Go back to the register and we're looking for HINO37 and enter. We're gonna do the same for FIT, federal income tax. Negative instead of equal, go back to the register and point to that federal income tax and enter. Group insurance, we're gonna do the same thing, negative instead of equals, go back to the register. Group insurance is nice, a benefit, this is the optional benefit, remember, and enter. The union dues, we're gonna say negative, go back to the register, pick up that 16 and enter. The 401k or retirement plan, also a nice option, the benefit to have, so it's good that they offer that. This is actually is a benefit to take out of our paycheck. And there's that 2,774.20. Now, instead of the difference being cash, the net pay, if I go back to the register, we see that the net pay should be the difference. That's what we're gonna calculate, which you would think would be the paycheck or the cash that would go out for uh, the paychecks. Um, but this time, the paycheck didn't actually go out until January, but uh, we owed it as of the end of the month and need to record it for this time period so that our financial statements will be correct 
as of the end of the time period. So if we highlight the debits minus the credits, that's going to add up to 29, 8, 75, 23. We're going to calculate that using our plug formula, which is the negative SUM. I'm going to use the keyboard the whole time here. So shift nine, hit the up arrow one time, hold down shift left one time, and then up, 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 up till we have the whole square. Then we could uh, close it up. We don't need to, however, and, and we could just say enter and it'll close it up for us. As you can see, it put the ending brackets on here. So that's the 29, 875, 23. Let's double check that that is indeed our net in or net check on the register. 29, 875, 23 looks good. Now let's post it then. We're gonna go to account 502. Uh, let's freeze the pain first. Let's freeze the pain now. So we're going to put our cursor on AD1. AD1. Then we're going to go to the View tab up top. Windows grouped at the bottom of the ribbon. And then go to the Freeze Pain and Freeze the Pain. Okay, so then we're going to look for 502. Remember, that's way at the bottom down here. It's down in the Income and Expense areas. It's going to be in the same area in the General Ledger. So we'll scroll to the right. We've got the Assets. we got the Liabilities. We got the capital, capital, and then we've got the revenue and expenses. So we're down here in BM and BN. So this time it's going to be on 1231. Notice the difference in the pattern here. It's not, it's not on, it's not on January 1st. It's on 12-1 because it's in essence an adjusting journal entry. And then in BN 22, we're going to say equals. Scroll up just a bit so we can find our data and we're looking for that 4877.50 and enter. Now uh, I'm going to put my cursor right to the left of the frozen uh, cells and then go right so it should pop back over. And then we're looking for 215. 215 is here. Now we're going to record all these at the same time without coming back over here to uh, the trial balance. So we're going to scroll right. We're looking for 215. 215. Where's 215? There it is. It's in its columns AS and AT. So in AS18 we're going to say 1231. And then in AT18, we're going to say equals and point to that AC6 and enter. Now we're looking for 220. That should be right next door, right next door, 220. So we're going to pick that up in column AW and AX. We're in cell AW18, date 1231. In cell AX18, equals. And we're going to pick up the 697 for HI and enter. That's correct, right? HI, yeah. Okay, then we're going to go to, uh, let's see, let's, let's not miss one this time. We're going to go to the uh, 225, 225. If we do miss one, that's okay. The double entry accounting system will let us know, but we'll try to get it right this time. So we're going to go on uh, 225 and sell BE and BF. We're going to say 1231. And then in BF14, we're going to say equals, and we're looking for that 225, that 8,404.13, bringing the balance up to 8,404.13. Note the patterns in our um, payable accounts here. It, uh, you know, goes up and then it goes down. <laughs> it goes up and then we paid it. It goes up and then we paid it. That, um, that should be the pattern just like it would be in an accounts payable type of account. So we're going to go then to uh, 243, 243 looks like it's down here and the date is going to be 1231 in row 25 and cell BF25 we're going to say equals, scroll back up just a bit, we're looking for that 243, we're picking up this 5,501 penny and enter. Okay, so now we're looking for 245, cell 245 or account 245. And that's going to be in cell BI10. Date 1231. The uh, amount is going to be equal to that 16 in AC10. And enter. Now we're looking for 227, 247. Slightly different. 247 in BI25. Date 1231. Then we're in cell BJ25 equals, and we're going to scroll up just a bit and pick up the retirement plan in AC11 uh, and enter. Okay, so now we're going to scroll back up and we just need to pick up that payroll payable account. So that one, I believe, is uh, 213. 
I know it's 213, but it's to the left, I believe. And uh, so it's down, looks like it's gonna be right here. So it's in AO, AO24, AO, AO. So that's gonna be 1231. And then AP24 will be equal to, scrolling back up just a bit, we're picking up that 29, 9, 8, 75, 23, and enter. So there is our balance. If we go right to the left side of the frozen panes and then go right, we'll pop back over to that trial balance and scroll down and see if we are in balance, which I hope we are. All right, we did it correctly this time. If we, that means the debits equal the credits with the green zeros. And the net income is uh, affected here because the expenses went up. And uh, we had to do it as of 1231 instead of January 1st, which would be the normal routine in order to do an adjusting entry and pull this data into the proper pay period, the proper year for our financial statements, reporting net income properly down by that uh, payroll cycle and reporting the related liabilities. We need to do the same thing, of course, for the uh, employer portion of payroll, reporting the proper payroll tax expense uh, in the proper time period and the liabilities related to it. So if we go back to our register over here, we're picking up now the pay uh, employer stuff, which is <laughs> the Social Security, the Medicare, the FUTA, and the SUTA. And uh, these two we've seen before because they're basically matching. We're gonna record it again here. Uh, for the employer portion, we already saw the employee portion coming out of the employee check. These two are employer only. Uh, note that SUDA could have an employee portion as well. We, and we currently are saying it does not here. It depends on the state. Okay, so we're going to go back and record this. It's going to be great. So we're going to be here, uh, FUTA first. We're going to go to the liability side. We're in cell AC15. It's going to be a credit, so we're going to say negative instead of equals. Go back to the register and earnings and point to that uh, OASDI. Then for the HI, we are in AC16. We're going to say negative. Go back to our register and point to the HI or Medicare. Now there's not going to be any uh, FUTA or SUTA because that's been completed. So we can just put zero there. We don't even need the accounts. I'm just going to put zero there. We're not going to post it because we don't want to waste the time. <laughs> we're going to be a little, little faster. So now we're going to do our negative sum formula. So negative sum, this being the plug formula, we're going to do it all with the key board and shift F9 down one time, holding the shift down right one time, holding shift down, 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 arrows three times. And we could close it up, but no need to, so we won't, and enter. Okay, so now we're gonna enter this data. I'm gonna make it green, uh, just so we don't mix it up here. We only need these three. So I'll just highlight those three, right click on them, and make them that light green. I'm picking up this light green right there. Nice light green so we can still see the, um, the numbers, hopefully. So we're looking for 220. So here's 220 on the trial balance. Going to be in the same order on the general ledger. Scrolling to the right to look for that 220. We've got the assets and then the liabilities. And uh, then here's 220. Uh, the FICA HI. The FICA. Oh, actually, there's 215. Oh, 520. <laughs> That's going to be all the way to the right because it's an expense account. And there it is, 520, the payroll taxes. So here we go. Let's pick that one up first. That's going to be on 1231 and BQ10 uh, and BR10. We're going to say equals. Point to that 1507.93, bringing the expense up. Then we're going to go back to that 215, which is what... I was looking for last time and find the 215 which is it going to be in the liabilities area it's in cells or columns as and at so we want to be here in as 19 date 1231 let's put a 1231 and then in at and 19 we're going to say equals point to that 810 81 note the pattern we got the employee portion the employer portion from prior periods, note the pattern, employee portion, employer portion, paid it off. Employee portion, employer portion, paid off both. Employee portion, employer portion, paid off both. That's what it should look like if the payroll's properly done. Hopefully that's what it looks like. So then we're going to go to the, uh, uh, what's it, 220. 220. 
which is right next door. There's 220. We want to be down here in AW19, the date of 1231. And then in AX19, we will say equals point to the 69712. And there we have it, same pattern here. Employee portion, employer portion. In the past, we have seen employee portion, employer portion, paid off both employee and employer portion. Employee portion, employer portion, then paid off both employee and employer portion. Employee portion, employer portion, paid off both employee and employer portion. Okay, I'll stop. So then we're going to go back to the left side of the frozen panes. Click right one time and see if we're in balance. And it looks good. So we're in balance. And so now we've recorded the payroll expenses, which will bring down net income. And the prior transaction showed the payroll tax well this one had the payroll tax expenses and the last one had just the payroll expenses which brings down net income and then on the balance sheet we have the liabilities related to both employee and employer portions the part we took from the employee paycheck and owe to the government and the part we took uh, from our account and owe to the government our account as the employer we're, we're i always think of ourselves as the employer when we work these problems okay so then we're going to Highlight this one and ungreen. I'm going to ungreen these. That's what I'm doing here. So I'm going to do that by selecting these cells at the bottom and we're going to paintbrush it. So we'll go to the home tab. We'll go to the clipboard group and paintbrush. And then we'll just paintbrush these back to blue. Okay, then the last transaction. Notice I'm going to keep this one in uh, January 15th. So I'm going to record it just so we can see what it'll be. And the reason we want to see it is because we're going to need it when we do the um, the, the year-end documents, the 940s and 941s. We're going to need to know what we paid. We're going to need to know the payment to be able to apply it to the proper pay period. And that's generally going to be the case in payroll, meaning uh, when we do the processing, we're going to, we're going to do it a, a month later. So it's obviously we're not doing the quarter in payroll right at December 31st. It's probably going to be sometime in January that we process all this stuff and therefore we're gonna know we've already we've already paid uh, the payroll in January and uh, when we process it and so we need to know what that is so I'm gonna post it here but we're not gonna record it to to our trial balance because this is our trial balance I'm gonna say as of the end of the year so this is the end of the year trial balance if we went to the journal entry for the next year or the general ledger we would see the data for um, the next year which would include the payroll payment that we're going to need to apply to the 940 and 941s for this year's uh, December's fourth quarter and year end of um, this year. So in any case when we pay this off uh, the journal entry is going to include the fact that uh, we're going to have to we're going to have to pay the uh, FICA uh, OASDI and the HI so these need to go down to zero when we pay it. So the debit's gonna be 162161 for Social Security or OASDI. For HI, it's gonna be 1394.24. For FIT, it's gonna be 8404.13. And then the checking account's gonna be the, the, uh, the credit. Now note, we, what we didn't do is reverse the payroll payable and that's going to be done as part of the adjusting process. So we might have a reversing entry. Uh, probably would be the best way to do it as of January 1st. We're not going to get into re reversing entries now. Uh, so, but uh, we could do it. We could do it that way. What we're doing now is just the normal payroll processing, paying off the liability so that we can report that on the payroll forms, the quarterlies and the year end. So I'm going to do this with a negative sum. And then shift nine up one time, left one time, shift left one time, and then up two times, just selecting that area and enter. So there we have it. Uh, again, we're not going to post this here because this is just the data for the end of the year, but we need to note this so that we can use it for our payroll documentation.